When you were growing up, did you have that kid on your block or maybe at your school who always had the latest game? You know, the one whose parents always seemed to buy games immediately after they came out? And of course, the other poor neighborhood kids like me would flock to his house in droves, foaming at the mouth for a chance to crowd around the television and see what new and amazing title they had. For me, let's just call that kid Jeff. This is a true story of how an obscure game cursed my friend. Jeff had it all. A nice house, a nice room, every console known to man in the 90s. Not only did he have the latest and greatest staple consoles, but also some consoles that most kids have no access to. The Turbo Graphics, the Commodore Amiga, the 3DO, you name it, he had it. I have lots of fond memories of going over to Jeff's house back in the day, and there'd always be a new game to play. Many sleepovers were also had at his house for that same reason. It was truly a time to be alive in the 90s and 2000s. But with all of the good games Jeff had in his possession, there were certainly some that missed the mark completely. That brings us to today's story. Out of all the bad games I've ever played growing up, there was one that I had completely forgotten about until recently. This monstrosity is known as Top Banana, a phrase I've honestly never heard of before. It's a platformer produced by Hex and Psychor for the Acorn Archimedes in 1991, which was one of those PC-type consoles. The game was also eventually ported over to the Atari ST and the Commodore Amiga in 1992, which is a version that Jeff had owned. But this was a couple years after that, really close to the year 2000, if not after the year 2000 that we finally played it. The game's story, if you can call it that, is all about saving the environment, which doesn't necessarily have the best track record at producing games. To quote the game's synopsis from its own manual, our planet is under threat, not from slimy aliens or evil wizards, but from direct consequences of our own greed and stupidity. Every moment sees further demolition of the rainforest, more leaky nuclear waste, land floods caused by melting ice caps, and much needed food just rotting in locked storehouses. So your task is to combat these forces which are worlds into oblivion and you must address the balance through positive action and it just so happens that you've got a super secret power of love yeah i i couldn't even make this stuff up honestly when i was a kid i had no idea what the plot even was but based on how horrible this game affected me and my buddies the plot doesn't matter what about top banana is so haunting well it all started the first time we ever played the game See, the first obvious thing to note about Top Banana is the uncanny visuals. The background and the foreground all kind of blend together in a trippy, nauseating way. Based on some research I did into the title, it was actually part of the intent. Much like the lucid psychedelic feeling many music videos had years ago, Top Banana's developer actually used images from television and movies and plastered them into the foreground. They wanted to capture that same trippy feel and make something worthwhile and positive. But the result is anything but. One day, when me and the boys were at Jeff's house, he booted up this game his dad had brought home for the Commodore Amiga, a console that we barely ever knew existed or played. Given that none of the rest of us had that computer, we thought the game would be some super secret thing we were lucky to experience. Once Top Banana's title screen goes away, you're greeted with a highly disturbing array of images and are dropped into the world where KT must destroy the evil entities that promote pollution and all that other stuff I mentioned earlier. But right away, we all realized that this game was the farthest thing from fun. The graphics were horrendous, the way everything was mashed together on the screen made it extremely difficult to play. Not only that, but the enemies were pure nightmare fuel. The farther you make it into Top Banana, the weirder it gets. Your environment becomes more muddled, causing severe eye strain to the point where I remember not being able to physically look at the screen. On top of that were the incredibly strange bosses, including some dude's head with money flying around it and a weird robot. And the music was literally garbled to the point where it sounded satanic. 
After watching Jeff play it for an hour or so, we turned the game off and switched to something else like Mario Kart. I remember we all thought it was a little bit off-putting and weird, but it even gave some of us the creeps. But perhaps no one was as affected by the game as Jeff was. You see, we all agreed to head back to his house the next day, which was a Saturday, but when I made it over there, I didn't see any cars in the driveway. Jeff wasn't home. A few days later, I had learned the truth. Jeff was in the hospital. He had suffered an intense seizure after playing video games the night after we left. It was serious enough that his parents decided to take him to the hospital, and the whole situation kind of spooked the rest of us when we found out. Seizures in video games are not terribly uncommon. I mean, in fact, some games have bold warning labels on the box, or even some text in the intro stating that flashing lights can be dangerous to somebody with epilepsy. But when Jeff finally made it out of the hospital, the first question on our minds was, what happened? And if you've made it this far into the video, you probably guessed it. It happened when playing Top Banana. At first we thought it was a fluke, because, you know, it was a Friday, we'd all been playing games for a long time already, and he kept playing video games after we left. But being the stupid kids we were back then, we just wanted to give the game another try. Except Jeff's parents gave him an explicit warning not to play Top Banana, which of course we didn't listen to. About a week later when Jeff's parents were out, me and a few friends all headed over to his house on a Saturday we were full of questions about his trip to the hospital and exactly how he felt after playing the game. He seemed a bit off, but otherwise in good spirits. When we all asked if we could play Top Banana again, he said sure, but he didn't want to be in the room when we did. So, of course, he handed us the game and told us to let him know when we were done. We ended up starting the game all over again, and it was just as bad as the first time we had played it. Horrible instances of eye strain and haunting sound effects and music. It was like a car accident. You couldn't look away. The game was just so bad. Except something happened this time that changed things between Jeff and us forever. After playing the game and cracking stupid jokes for a half hour or so, Jeff stormed into the living room where we all were and turned off the Amiga. I remember him yelling like, you all need to go home now or something like that. But we all kind of laughed it off at first, but seeing the look on his face, it looked pretty serious. Maybe it was because he realized how upset his parents would be if they found out what we were doing, but looking back, I don't think that was the case. I think he was generally disturbed by the game. None of us ever played Top Banana again. In fact, I didn't even realize what the game was called until a couple of weeks ago when I was perusing the internet. Jeff kind of faded from the friend group entirely after that. We would still occasionally go over and play games with him, but he never seemed as into it as he was before that day. Eventually, he stopped having us over altogether, and we just grew apart. Being much older now, this game gives off such an odd feeling in my mind. Its legacy is forever tarnished, not only because of how bad it is, but how it haunted our friend Jeff back in the day. I haven't spoken to Jeff or really even thought about him much in over 20 years, and for all I can gather, his social media presence is non-existent. I've never heard of him ever having another seizure, but Tom Banana seems to have affected him so much that it literally changed his outlook on video games. I just hope that wherever he is and whatever he's doing, that he's alright. To my knowledge, a video game has never caused anyone to go blind or be killed from visuals or something crazy like that, but I'm sure it's landed multiple people in the hospital. The developers of Top Banana sought to create something unique and psychedelic, but had no idea what other effects the visuals could cause. To those looking to play the game, I'm sure there are workable ROMs out there, but I honestly don't recommend it. It still gives me the creeps when I see it or think about it now, editing this video is pretty dang tough, at least I can imagine. I don't ever want to play it again. I hope you enjoyed my interesting walk down memory lane and the short story of Top Banana. I thought it was a little bit interesting to take something true from my own life and incorporate it as the inaugural episode into the new strange gaming stories. Have you ever heard of Top Banana? What are your thoughts on it? Has a game ever triggered you like Top Banana did to Jeff? I'd love to hear your stories down below. Stay safe out there. This is Press Start to Continue. I'll see you next time.